Hi everyone, Tara here, but you can call me T Pal. So 2019 is almost over, so you know what that means. It's time to start setting up our bullet journals for 2020. This video actually contains a giveaway. So because I'm showing you how I set up my 2020 bullet journal, I'm giving away a full bullet journal starter kit in this video. I'll have more details on what's in the kit and how you can enter at the end of the video. Thank you for letting me get that out of the way and without further ado, here is my 2020 bullet journal setup. So first of all, I can't believe I'm actually starting my third full year of bullet journaling. When I actually started, it was at the half point of a year, but this will be the third full year that I'm doing it. It's also the first year that I will be using the Suki bullet journal from Notebook Therapy, one, because it's new, and two, because the past years I've used the Scribbles That Matter A5 Dotted Journal. And if you'd like to know my reasoning for switching, I actually made a whole video about it, so that will be linked down below, so I won't go into that here. For my welcome page to a new decade, I wanted something that would go with actually my new office. This year I painted my office walls a dark blue called Celestial Blue, so that was kind of what I wanted to go with here. I also got my first metallic gel pen. I know, like what was I waiting for? I don't actually know, but for this page I did these like wavy sections at the top and bottom of the page and then in between them I wrote hello 2020 using my Sakura Pigma brush pen which is actually my current favorite brush pen. It's and then I drew some stars and some dots on top of the blue sections and this is where you know I'm in a new journal because I actually could have colored a bit more with the Tombow Do brush pen to get rid of the brush marks, but I used to have paper that it would bleed through, and now that I have 160 GSM paper, I could have kept coloring, but I thought like maybe I was pushing the limits, but no, you'll see when I turn the page, it's like there's nothing there. So I wish that I had really gone in, and I think next time I do something like this, I won't be as afraid. I did a pen test and everything. I guess I just underestimated how good this paper is. Next is the necessary evil of the yearly setup, which is the at a glance. It is where you have to write 365 tiny numbers. However, 2020 is actually a leap year. So all of us that are including one of these in our bullet journals have to write 366 tiny numbers. And that one little number can push you into a cramp zone, let me tell you. Now, I actually hate making mistakes on this page, but luckily the mistake I made was not with the actual numbers. Like, I have the correct amount of numbers for each month, but first of all, when I went to write April, I kind of messed up. And then when I had originally planned out this page, because I'm using a smaller notebook than usual, I just wanted the Monday through Sunday letters at the top of the first row and then it would be obvious like down the page what was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and so on but I accidentally started writing it for every row so I ran out of rows at the very bottom in November and I had to put the 30 as one of those like diagonal lines like taking up the same box almost like you would see in a cheap calendar. Not super proud of it but I'll tell you, man, if it wasn't for that leap year, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So next to my at a glance, I have my quote page. And if you've been watching me, you know I'm going to put the same quote that I put in every single one of my planners, every single one of my bullet journals since I heard it for the first time. And it is a quote from The Office that is said by the character Pam. The quote is, be strong, trust yourself, love yourself, conquer your fears. Just go after what you want and act fast because life just isn't that long. I love this quote. I have an abbreviated version of it on a mantra band. I write it in every planner like I mentioned. It is just my favorite quote that has to do with living life. This next page I feel like is something so many people are doing now. In years past, I didn't include it because I was using the same journal over and over, but this year I have a new journal and it is a different size and it has a different number of boxes horizontally and vertically than the one I used in the past. So I thought it would be helpful to have a grid spacing cheat sheet in this year's bullet journal. 
So if you want to do this in your journal, there's lots of ways you can do it. But what I chose to do was to number the boxes vertically and horizontally. I drew lines separating the grid into halves, quarters, and thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And then you'll know exactly how to count to achieve the layout that you want. Now to the left of this, I did something similar but different. And this is a page I'm calling common layouts. Now grid spacing is helpful in making layouts, but this is specifically how many boxes you can divide the page into horizontally and vertically. And I feel like this is a different situation because it's like a container as opposed to just splitting up the page. So for horizontal, I did two boxes, three boxes, and four boxes and wrote down how many actual boxes as in like the grid it took up. And then for horizontal, I went as far as halves, thirds, quarters, fifths, and sevenths. Because if I want to do a one-page weekly spread, I might have seven boxes vertically. And I figured out how many boxes, how big a box can be if you want an even number of boxes with at least one square in between separating them. So I bet I'll be referencing these two pages a lot. As I'm recording this, I've actually started working on my January setup and I actually have already been referencing those pages quite a bit. Next we have my future log, which is totally different than I have done in the past. Normally I just do the months, maybe a tiny at a glance for the month to see where the days land, and that's it, and then I just leave room to write events. But this year I wanted to actually separate my future log into categories, and the four I decided to include were holidays, events, appointments, and tasks. I did this because I didn't want to mix in like a boring doctor's appointment with like a fun event we're going to, so I wanted them separated. I also wanted a place to write tasks because I have found that this is super useful when you have tasks that are quarterly or maybe they're only done once a year. And like when you're a homeowner, you have a lot of things like that. Like um, I pay my taxes quarterly, so I like having a reminder because usually they're due at the first of the month. And if you wait until you set up the month and then go back and look, you might not, you know, be able to mail the check in time or whatever. It's also good to know like when your car inspection is due or when your registration's due. So it's just helpful to have a place to write tasks that are upcoming, like maybe six or eight months from now that you might forget about when you actually get there. For the colors, I actually tried to find color pairings from my Tombow Funosuke colored brush pens, my Tombow Twin Tone markers, and my Zebra Mild Liners. So the months were written with the brush pen, the categories were written with the Twin Tone markers, and they were highlighted with the Mild Liners to add a degree of separation between the categories. And then of course, I just repeated the same exact thing for the second half of the year. Now you may have noticed there's a category missing from the future log, but that's on purpose and it is birthdays. I decided to give birthdays its own spread and instead of dividing up birthdays by the month, I'm dividing up birthdays by the zodiac sign. Yes, there will be some overlap and I will have to write some 2019 birthdays and some 20. 21 birthdays because of the way that that zodiac signs work but I think it'll be really fun to be able to categorize my friends and family into their respective zodiac signs and see if any patterns emerge in their personalities and I also wanted another excuse to utilize my metallic gel pens so I used it to draw the constellations that correspond to each zodiac sign and I really like the way that this turned out and I cannot wait to start filling it in. Now this next spread is not very exciting or cute, but I think it's very important. I highly recommend that anyone save money. I am a huge advocate for saving money. And I realized that saving money today, what it looks like is you just move money from one account to another and it's just like numbers on a screen. And unless you have like a piggy bank like I do, there's no instant gratification that comes with saving money. Like I have a piggy bank and if I drop in some coins, 
at least I get to hear that satisfying sound of them hitting like the other coins and I get to like put them in the slot one by one of the piggy bank. But you don't get that when you're saving large amounts of money in an online bank account. So what I like to do is in my bullet journal, I draw a savings jar like you would have in real life, except it's just drawn on a page. And then as you fill in your savings account, you get to actually fill in the jar by coloring it in. Now, there's a million different savings plans that you could follow that fit your goals or your lifestyle or how your workplace pays you. But the one that I choose to do is that I get two paychecks a month. I follow a plan that gives you an amount to put away each payday and you will ultimately save $2,000 for the year. The amounts are always different and they try to put the smaller amounts during the times of year that you're not spending as much. So the smaller amounts are like in January and December when like the holidays are happening and then the larger amounts are in like the slow times of year where you might not be spending as much. I'm a huge advocate of this because I find that a lot of people are held back financially and I think they don't realize like how much they could actually save until like they have something like this, like a plan to follow where they could like discipline themselves to do it. And personally, I was able to save up for my dream car and I bought it this year. I bought a car that I wanted for 12 years, a new Beetle convertible, and I have a whole video about it, but I was able to do that because I saved money. And it's not like I make a lot of money. It's that I was putting that money away before I was tempted to spend it on stuff that I didn't really need and may just want in the moment. And I was able to buy something that was really special to me that I had wanted for a really long time. So take it from me. If you can get yourself on a savings plan and you have a reward system like this or similar to this, it becomes really easy. It's kind of hard at first because you feel like, oh my God, I'm like, you know, I could be spending this money, but it's just sitting in an account. But trust me, what really helped me was having a goal to work towards, in my case, the car. And there's enough room in this spread where you could put like pictures of the thing you're saving for. Like if you were saving for a vacation, you could put pictures of that place on this spread and that would help motivate you to put the money away every week or every other week or every month or whatever you decide to do. If you would like to follow the same plan that I have, which helps you save $2,000 a year, screenshot the video now. Next, we have a very simple spread, but I always have it in my yearly setup. It's my journaling prompt. I journal on a somewhat daily basis. I try to do it every day. Of course, we know life isn't perfect. It doesn't always happen. And when I journal, it's very informal. It's just about my day or my feelings or whatever. But once a week, I like to follow a prompt. And it's usually a question that has you explore some kind of idea or something you want or like something about yourself. And this is another thing I'm a huge advocate for. If you're in your 20s or really any time in life, but especially in your 20s, and you're trying to figure yourself out and you're trying to pinpoint like what you want your life to look like, self-reflection is everything. And I find that doing really good thought-provoking prompts in my journal where I know nobody will read it and I can write as long or as much as I want to, that is how I find clarity. And clarity is my big thing this year. Basically, I scour the internet for the best prompts. I try to pick the most thought-provoking ones. There are a few minimally cheesy ones to give myself a break, but I try to pick really thought-provoking ones. And if this is something you're interested in and you'd like to follow along with mine, I'm going to put them all in the description box below. It's going to be a long description. If you don't want to follow mine, there are tons that you can look up on Pinterest and just try to find one that has 52 for each week of the year. Now, last but not least, we have a page that I wanted to do mostly because I knew it would be visually appealing, but also it has a practical purpose. I have acquired over the past couple years a lot of Tombow dual brush pens, and it's not enough to be able to look at the cap and know what color it is. My old bullet journal had a pen test page, but I quickly filled that up, and my new journal doesn't have that. I could just dedicate one in the back to it, but I don't want to waste my time or my paper testing pens. So I'm making a Tombow swatch page and each swatch is like a little Polaroid where the image would go traditionally in a Polaroid. That is where I will do the swatch. And then in the white space that would traditionally be underneath the picture, 
I will write the number because Tombow Dual Brush Pens are numbered and it makes it really convenient to be able to find the exact shade you're looking for. So I decided to go in numerical order. I started with N15, which is like the true black Tombow pen. Then I went through the yellows and the greens and the blues, which are my favorite. And then the purples, the pinks, the reds, the oranges, the browns. Now I have not only a list of all the Tombow Dual Brush pens I own, so I don't buy duplicates unnecessarily, and I can look at the swatches, pick a color I want, and go find it based on the number and not waste time testing them. And here is the final flip through. If I had to pick one word that would describe what I'm looking for in 2020, it's clarity. I think that's very fitting because 2020 is the equivalent of perfect eyesight and clarity, perfect eyesight. I just feel like it's a fitting year to seek out clarity. So I hope you liked my 2020 bullet journal setup. I feel much more prepared for the new year, but I know you're wondering now, how do I enter the giveaway? For Bujo Week, I'm giving away a bullet journal starter kit, which includes one A5 dot grid journal with 160 pages of 160 GSM paper, a six pack of my favorite fine liners, which are the Sakura Pigma Microns in black, the pens I learned to do calligraphy with, which are the Tombow Hard and Soft Tip Brush Pens. And who doesn't love these? A set of five Zebra Mild Liners, which are dual tips, so they're great for drawing or highlighting. And the Big Daddy, the 50 pack of Crayola Super Tips Markers, which will allow you to make tons of beautiful and colorful spreads all year. And a pouch to put it all in from Notebook Therapy. And yes, if you were wondering, all the pens and markers that I'm giving away will fit in here together. I tried it, it worked. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, comment on this video, and follow my bullet journal Instagram at tpowsbujo. These details and a link to my Instagram are in the description box. The giveaway runs from today until Christmas, December 25th at midnight. Eastern Standard Time. The winner of the giveaway will be announced in my last video of 2019, which will be uploaded on December 31st, New Year's Eve. Again, all of these details are in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.